Hello everyone, this is Gaurang Rajal and in this video we'll be taking a look at the non-inverting and inverting comparator configurations using op-amps. We'll take a deeper look at their output response at different frequencies as well as the direct applications such as zero crossing detector, time marker circuit and the sample and hold circuit. So let's get right into it. So here we have a non-inverting comparator. We can see that since the input signal is connected to the non-inverting terminal and the reference voltage is connected to the inverting terminal of the op-amp. The output of the op-amp is basically such that when Vin goes above Vref, it gives a high output and when Vref is above Vn, it gives a low output. So, testing this at a frequency of 50 Hz, we'll get an output like this. So, we can see here that whenever the input signal in blue goes above the Vref value, which is in green, we get a high output and vice versa. Here we can even give a negative reference voltage of minus 1 volts. Here we'll get the exact here we'll get exactly the same logic. When V in goes above V ref, we'll get a high output. Although the range of going above V ref will be higher in this case. So by running this simulation we get such an output. Let's revert back to reference voltage of 1 volts and check for different frequencies. So we already saw the output at frequency of 50 Hz. Let's try 500 Hz. Running the simulation at 500 Hz. So running the simulation at 500 Hz, we get this output. We can see that the output square wave is slightly distorted and we get a sloping edge. Running the simulation for input frequency of 1 kHz, we have this output. We can clearly see that the slopes have increased and the output is even more distorted. Simulation for input frequency of 5 kHz gives us this output. Here the output is completely distorted and it does not resemble the output of a comparator. It has even been clamped to a negative voltage and the output peaks are completely triangular. For a frequency of 100 kHz, we'll get this output. Here, we do not get any output waveform at all and the output is completely flat at minus 14 volts. Now we have here an inverting comparator configuration where the input signal is connected to the inverting terminal and the reference voltage is connected to the non-inverting terminal. In this case, whenever the V in voltage goes above V ref, we get a low output and vice versa. So testing this for 50 Hz input, so testing this for 50 Hz input, Here we can verify the logical result. Whenever Vn goes above Vref, we get a low output. When Vn goes below Vref, we get a high output. We can also 
have a negative reference voltage here like we did in the non-inverting configuration. So here we get the inverted result. When V in is above V ref, we get low output and most of the part is cut off and is low, whereas a small part is high. For an input of 500 hertz signal, we'll change the transient parameter to 6 milliseconds and VREF to 1 volt again. If we run this simulation, we get this output. Again, the edges are sloping and the output is slightly distorted. at 1 kilohertz we get even more sloping edges and more distorted output at 50 kilohertz we get such an output at input frequency of 5 kilohertz if we run the simulation we get such an output here again the comparator output is completely destroyed and we do not get any comparator operation. At 10k, if we run the simulation, we will get this output which is even more disconnected from the input. From these we can conclude that the output of comparator is very sensitive to frequencies. At high frequencies the output gets completely distorted. Now let's take a quick look at the direct applications of comparators. So first is a zero crossing detector. Here V in is applied to the non-inverting terminal and the reference voltage is grounded. So we have a zero volts reference voltage. If we run the simulation for this, We'll see that we get a high output whenever V in is greater than 0 volts and whenever it crosses the 0 line, the output switches to 0. Since the output always switches whenever the input crosses 0 line, it is called 0 crossing detector. This is the time marker circuit whose output indicates each cycle of the input waveform. Here the first stage is basically the zero crossing detector whose output is fed to a differentiator which is fed again to a diode. So from the zero crossing detector we will get level shifts from high to low whenever the input crosses the zero line. Then from the differentiator we will get peaks whenever we have levels and from the diode we'll get only the positive peaks at the end of each cycle. We can verify this by running the simulation. So, at the input and output of the comparator, we'll get a zero crossing detector output. At the end of the differentiator, we'll get peaks at each zero crossing as we can see here. and at the end of the whole circuit, we'll get only positive peaks. For the output simulation for the final, now the simulation with only the final output and the first input, we'll have this. So here we can see that we get peaks at the end of each full cycle.
the last application that we'll take a look at today is this sample and hold circuit. So it consists of this MOSFET in the center to which a pulse waveform is fed. The frequency of the pulse waveform decides the sampling and holding rate of the input wave given here. After the MOSFET, we have a capacitor which is the holding capacitor. It holds the voltage of the input waveform whenever it is made to pass through the MOSFET. The discharge time of this capacitor becomes very high due to the high impedance provided by this buffer. So we can try running this simulation for the input and final output we'll get this sample and hold circuit. So we can see that the input is being sampled here and then held for this duration. Again, it's being sampled here and then held for this duration. So this is the correct output of sample and hold circuit. Now a thing to be noted is that the sampling frequency that is the frequency of this pulse input to the MOSFET should be greater than twice the highest frequency of the input. In this case we have taken the input wave frequency as 50 Hz and the pulse wave frequency as 1 kHz which is decided by this time period of 1 milliseconds. Because of this condition that the sampling frequency should be greater than twice the input frequency, we get a non-distorted output. So this has been a look at the comparative configurations, inverting and non-inverting, along with their output waveform variations with increasing frequency and the direct applications. Thanks for watching.